Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got some advice for you about Black Ops 4 Beta Weekend number two. The second beta test weekend is coming up. It'll be the first one for Xbox and PC users. PC is open beta, by the way, and it'll be the second weekend in a row for PlayStation users. For those of you that didn't get to play last week, which is gonna be quite a few people, I wanted to give you some advice to help you spend your time as efficiently as possible. We literally only get one weekend, and grinding for things in this game takes a super long time, so it's not likely that you're gonna get to try everything, and it's also not likely that you'll get a super great grasp of the meta, especially if you've only got like a casual playtime. I'm a sweaty no-life loser who uploads videos to YouTube, so I was able to play for like 30 hours. But, you know, not everybody's able to do that. So, tip number one that I have for you is that leveling weapons takes a super long time. It's really, really easy to take a weapon from like level 1 to 7 or 8, but moving from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 14 takes literally forever. I could probably watch the whole Lord of the Rings Extended Edition trilogy before I could level up one of these weapons, and that's almost not an exaggeration. So, if you want to try the really cool stuff, which is the operator mods, you need to choose which weapon to specialize in, or you probably won't be able to play long enough to get it. Even with double experience, it took me two to maybe three hours of constant sweaty maximum tilt gameplay to level up a weapon high enough to get the operator mod. If double experience isn't on, double weapon experience that is next weekend, it could take you up to five or six hours, which was my experience on opening night. Some guns also don't have operator mods, so getting to the maximum level isn't as rewarding. The ones that I would tell you are definitely worth leveling are the Spitfire, Cordite, and Mozu. None of these are available until you're in your 20s in level, but the Spitfire is roughly like a Scorpion. The mod, the mod is Rapid Fire. It's called Wildfire. It's like Rapid Fire on steroids. It's crazy. The Cordite has an unlimited magazine, and the Mozu has a one-shot kill attachment if you're getting headshots. There's some pretty mediocre ones, which is going to be all of the DMRs. Every single one of the DMRs is a good weapon, and all of their operator mods modify the burst in some way. Among them, I believe the AUG is my favorite because it will make it potentially go full auto, and there's some ones you really shouldn't buy with. The Dragon's Breath on the shotgun is just not worth the time investment. The GKS Burst SMG is neat, but again, not worth the time. LMG Suppressor doesn't do very much. And finally, at the end, we have the TAC Knife and the Bayonet on one of the rifles. Personally, I love these. They're really fun. When the final game comes out, I'll probably use them. But if I had a limited amount of time in the, to play in the beta, I wouldn't be rushing for knives. Tip number two is that you should use AP rounds as much as possible. AP stands for Armor Penetrating, and it does just that. It chews through armor faster and it destroys the armor so they can't regenerate it in any capacity. Armored users are everywhere and they're super annoying. Currently that's probably my number one frustration with the game and if you look at Reddit or Twitter that's pretty much what everybody is complaining about. No matter how big of a campaign there is on YouTube or Twitter or elsewhere to encourage people to use anything but armored, that's what they're going to use. So you need to be prepared to kill them, and the best way to do that is use guns with AP rounds. A lot of the guns have AP rounds, so it's not too hard to find them. However, AP rounds 2 doesn't help you chew through the armor any faster, that's just FMJ. Just use AP rounds 1 and you should be good to go. Speaking of guns and what you should and shouldn't be using, there are some really good guns in the beta and some not so great ones, so I want to give you my tip on best weapons. The MX-9 submachine gun, right off the bat, is by far the best starting submachine gun. I don't think it's the best one, but it's very easy to use, it's relatively low recoil, it's reliable, it's got straightforward attachments, advanced mags are fantastic, it's got good optics. It's a machine gun that everybody can wrap their mind around and everybody can use really, really well. The best submachine gun is probably the Spitfire, just because it has a super high rate of fire and in a game with a lot of health that just gives you a lot of advantage and times to kill. So it's a really fun gun. It takes a little bit more skill to use, but I think it is overall the best. The Cordite is a huge mag, kind of like a P90 SMG. It's not as competitive as the Spitfire, but it is easy to use and not even remotely bad. When it comes to rifles, really the number one rifle you want to go for leveling is the Rampart. The Rampart is the rifle that everybody's calling the new SCAR. It shoots a little bit slower than the others, but it's relatively accurate. And what makes it downright filthy is that you can equip high caliber one and high caliber two. High caliber two will extend the headshot damage range down to the chest. 
It's effectively kind of like stopping power as long as you're guaranteed hitting upper chest and it'll kill you in three shots from a lot of crazy ranges on the map. This is the big boy rifle. This is the one where you can put people down really, really fast with if you have skill. Other weapons are in the rifle category are nice and they're usable, but they're not really main. Like the ICR is really easy to use. You won't have any problems with it, but it's not special. The AK isn't bad, but I feel the AK shoots a little slow. You kind of have to have rapid fire on it for it to be competitive, but the Rampart's the one you want to go for. When it comes to the DMRs or burst rifles, they're in their own category and the AUG, which is called the ABR, is by far the best one. The good old AUG is fantastic and powerful in this game. It's a three round burst rifle and it's the best rifle in the game despite not having AP rounds. This is one where my advice is a little bit conflicting. You can't run AP rounds on it, which is unfortunate, but it does a lot of damage, a lot of good headshot damage, and more than anything, more than most of the weapons in the game, the AUG is incredibly consistent, and it's rewarding if you put in the time to master the accuracy, and that's obviously what you're watching gameplay of here. As a matter of fact, you're watching gameplay of the AUG with the operator mod attachment on it that allows me to increase my burst up until full auto at a certain point. Moving along from weapons into perks, the number one perk that I'm going to recommend to you guys and one that almost I think should be default in this game is Engineer. Engineer is your friend. No, seriously, that perk that most people don't run in Call of Duty games unless there's some sort of sweaty S&D star trying to work the GB ladders and they have to see trophy systems and stuff. Engineer is the most useful perk to me. That is the one perk I won't go without. There's a lot of spam on the map, okay? There's a lot of specialists throwing down mines and sensors and darts and packs and a lot of things moving around. It's very easy to lose track of it all. It's very easy to round the corner into something unpleasant. It's very easy to sit there and wonder how come everybody can see you when you're kind of sitting underneath a sensor dart. Engineer shows you all of those things plainly and clearly. It helps you understand the meta of the game, it helps you understand how your enemies are going to react, and helps keep you out of running into mines and killer dogs and things like that. In my opinion, Engineer is significantly more useful than Flak Jacket, even though they're in the same tier, because there's an overall lack of explosives. Yes, there are explosives. You will blow up, things do go boom, but since not everybody spawns with grenades, and grenades are actually kind of hard to get, there's not going to be a lot of grenade spam. So I think Engineer will save you more than Flak Jacket ever will, and it's just super, super helpful. On a similar note, when it comes to your equipment, the majority of people are gonna to gravitate towards stem and armor for obvious reasons on armor and for obvious reasons on stem. Now, stem is fantastic. I love stem. I did stem consistently throughout the alpha, but looking at this, I think that equipment charge and acoustic sensor are underrated. Equipment charge was my number one go-to because I like having my equipment and specialist abilities ready really fast, but the acoustic sensor allows you to hear people as they move around you. As people walk around behind walls and stamp their feet around, it pings them on the radar. So it gives you a little bit of sort of see-through walls ability or hear-through walls ability. It also lets you hear footsteps and stuff. So that one's definitely underrated. Equipment charts, if you like to use your abilities, is underrated. And uh, of course, you can run armor if you have no thumbs and you don't want to go to heaven. When it comes to streaks, most people want streaks that are optimal for their value. What is the most amount of kills my streak will get for the least amount of effort put into them? And the two that stand out to me are the Attack Chopper and the Mantis. Now, there have been problems with the Attack Chopper not being aggressive enough. And yes, you know, there's a lot of cover, so in some maps it doesn't work. But overall, the Attack Chopper is not terribly hard to earn, and it does get you kills, and it does oppress the enemy team pretty well. The Mantis isn't the greatest tank, and it's no ABR, but it can be called in, and it can be put in location, and it will harass enemies very, very well, and give you a lot of map control. As you can see, that's the ones that I run in this gameplay, and those are by far the best value streaks. I don't think getting the strike team is worth it. The two guys get killed pretty easily, and they don't really kill anybody. I wish they were more aggressive. I wish they did something useful, but they don't. The strafing run, where the Warthog comes in and blasts the map, is, I would say, fantastic. It's fun. It's really powerful, really strong, but I'm not sure if it's worth it and how many points you have to get. It takes a while to get up there. Most people won't get it. You probably get better value from the uh, Attack Chopper and Mantis. And of course, the low streaks are all fine because they're low. They're easy to get. You know, Hellstorm, Lightning Strike, UAV, all of those are very straightforward. You know how those work. And finally, my last tip when it comes to streaks is that if you want streaks, the best way to do it is to shoot people and then back away after you've injured them a little bit because this game counts all assists as kills, much like Overwatch. If I shoot a guy and I do 15 damage because I shot him in the toe, 
and then he walks into a mine and blows up, the guy that planted the mine and me both get the same amount of points toward our streaks. So if you're looking at a hard point or a person and, you know, a couple of people on objective and you shoot them a few times and don't kill anybody, you don't have to be greedy and stay there and keep pushing. You can pull back and heal and let your teammates move in and do some damage. And if they kill anybody, you get the points from it. Injuring people and being conservative is a very, very good way to get full points towards your streaks. Also, a technique you see me doing in this game is support specialists tend to rack up points pretty quickly. In this case, crash and recon. They give you points, recon will give you points for every person you scan with your ability, every point you get under a sensor dart. Crash gives a lot of points when people pick up ammo, and it pretty much gives them a flat 200 points every single time he heals. Every time he pops his heal, you just get a free 200 points as long as everybody's alive, and just free points toward your streaks. The other specialists that are more lethal in their abilities are more skill dependent, and you can't just kind of call them in, but with Crash, if I'm close, I'll just call in a heal and bam, I've got my streaks. So run support if you want to get a whole lot of streaks. Recon's pretty funny too, especially if you put a good sensor dart in a point, every single death on that point is just more points for you. And finally, my last tip of the day, the one that is, it's gonna take a little getting used to. My advice is to boost slide a lot. Sliding on your knees is very fast. You get good range, good acceleration. I think it helps you jump a little bit higher or at least further. There's a big meta in this game of sliding around. So if you've got a scuff, if you're playing bumper jumper, just configure your controls in some way to where you can hit the duck button so that you can slide around a lot. That is the most powerful maneuver you have for cornering or doing just about anything. Just remember, boost sliding saves lives. Guys, that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. Hostile tag deploy beacon online. Hostile lightning strike incoming. Mantis. Hard point lost. Enemy UAV above. Assault tax down. Come get it. Eliminate the seeker. Down profit. Two twenty four, two twenty five before the one by dead man guy.